Hi friends, this is a very interesting question when we are building recommendation systems using matrix factorization techniques. Typically when you are building a recommendation system using matrix factorization techniques, we have a ratings matrix like this, right? Wherein each row corresponds to a user u, each column corresponds to an item i. This is a big matrix, a sparse matrix where each cell r u i, right? Each cell r u i corresponds to the rating given on the ith item by youth user, right? This is, this is a typical ratings matrix that we have. We typically learn how to do matrix factorization by decomposing this matrix into a user matrix and into an item matrix, right? Standard methodology that we employ. But now imagine that in addition to this ratings matrix, we also have additional information, which is often referred to as side information. Imagine for each user UI, we also have additional features in addition to the ratings matrix. Imagine we know the gender of the user. We know the age of the user, the city in which the user lives, the income of the user and so on and so forth. These are all features corresponding to user i. Similarly, imagine we have an item or a movie j, right? So for this movie j also, which is nothing but your i, basically, your items basically. Imagine if this is for Netflix or any movie recommendations then a movie also can have features or items also can have features. For example, if your items are movies, you can have the name of the director, the name of the lead actor, what is the budget of the movie, right? And miscellaneous things about uh, uh, how many, what is the duration of the movie, what is the language of the movie and many details like that. Now imagine, how the, imagine if you have these side information or additional information, how do you incorporate this information into the matrix factorization setup? The matrix factorization setup is very simple. You have this ratings matrix that you decompose it into product of two matrices, a user matrix and an item matrix. That's simple. But into that mathematical framework of matrix factorization, how do you incorporate this additional information about users? You have this, this whole thing is called side information. How do you incorporate into the mathematical formulation of matrix factorization? Again, this is a very important question if you think about it, because in lots of real world situations, imagine if you're a machine learning engineer at uh, Hotstar or at Netflix or at Amazon or at Google, in addition to the ratings information, you have all of these other information also. How do you now incorporate this into the matrix factorization formulation? Think about it. Again, there are many solutions to this. There is no one single solution, but can you come up with the simplest way to integrate this information into the matrix factorization formulation? Again, this question itself, this question could also be asked in the interviews and this is considered an easy interview question. Again, there are many ways to solve it. I'm not saying there is only one way to incorporate side information, but can you think of the simplest and the easiest way to incorporate this side information into matrix factorization. Please pause this video here and think of how you will solve it before you check out the rest of the video. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have thought through. First, let's quickly recap the standard matrix factorization formulation if you have only the ratings matrix, right? So what you want to minimize is you want across, again, this is a summation across all the items and all users. This is the actually observed rating given by user u on item i, your qi is basically a dense vector for each item. Your pu is a vector representing each user. So you, you, you're basically decomposing this rating into as product of two vectors here, right? And then mu is the global average value. This is the global average rating. Bu and bi are basically bias terms wherein BU represents the average rating given by this user U across all the ratings that he or she provided. BI is the average rating for the item I, right? Standard formulation. Again, what you're doing here is basically you're trying to, you're trying to capture this information that you have in RUI as a product of these two vectors and through these simple parameters that you have. Right. And what you're solving for is you're trying to minimize this difference through a squared error sort of setup. This is like a mean squared error that you're minimizing. Essentially, that's what you're doing now. OK, so what what are all the variables that you need to minimize across QIs? You have to find what the optimal QI is. What is the optimal PU? What is the bias BU, BI and mu? These are all the parameters of this optimization problem. Because these are parameters of the optimization problem, there is a regularization associated with them. 
Very simple. Remember here that QI is a vector, PU is a vector, these three are scalars. This is your standard matrix factorization based approach. If you only have these ratings, right? Again, this is in a typical basic setup, you may not have these bias terms and the global average, but we're just plugging in because that's a typical setup in which most matrix factorization based approaches are typically used with a ratings matrix. Okay, so this is here, we're not using any side information. Now, given this formulation, our objective is to inject, is to somehow incorporate or inject the side information into this. Now, if you think logically, right, what we're trying to do is we are trying to explain this rating as a product of two vectors, one vector corresponding to the item, one vector corresponding to the user and using some global averages. That is the intuition behind this formulation, right? Now, now comes the fun part. Now, let's look at the side information. Imagine the side information is present in two matrices. One matrix is X superscript U, right? Let's assume there are D features for every user. This X U basically means these are, this is the matrix of all the features, all the side information features like gender, age, income, all of those details, right? Whether somebody is a prime customer or not, somebody is a premium customer or not, all those details. So every row here corresponds to the youth users data. Similarly, all the side information corresponding to the item, if the items are movies, the lead actor, the director, the budget, the duration, the language, all of that are there in the ith row of XI. Let's just assume that. Now, if you think about it, if you think about it, the rating that user I gave on item I, the user U, sorry, the rating that user U gave on item I also depends on the youth users, these features, because maybe there is a movie Look at this, there is a movie which the user might like or maybe a youth user uh, who, who, is, who is in a certain age bracket or who belongs to a certain gender or, or who lives in a certain city typically tends to like movies of a specific type, right? Which means this RUI also depends on this youth users vector, okay? Let's write the youth users vector as this XU is basically, X superscript U is basically the feature matrix of this is the feature matrix where you have features of all users. This subscript U here, I'm just using explaining the notation here, basically means the U row. Similarly, this XI I. XI is this whole matrix. I is basically this I row. Right? So this rating that user I provided on item I also depends on the youth users features and the ith items features. So maybe I can explain some of this RUI, not all of RUI, some of this RUI, some of this rating, probably I can somehow approximate this rating by building a model on the youth users feature vector and the ith items feature vector. And all I need is this model. This FM is basically a function. This GM is a function, right? All I need to build is, okay, if I have the youth users features and the ith items features, can I build a summative model where I'm building one model on the youth users features? This model will be FM. I'm building an another model GM, another machine learning model GM. It's going to be a regression model because these are numerical ratings, right? This is also a regression model, which only uses the ith items features. Can I do this? Yes. Some of it, if not all of it, it can be explained by them. Now, what are the simplest machine learning regression models I can build? Simple linear regression models. So if F and G are simple linear models, then I can say that I can explain some of RUI, not all of RUI, some of RUI, I can approximate this. If I use a linear model, what is a linear model? This is my youth users feature, right? This is, this is basically my youth users feature vector. This is the weight on this feature vector. This is basically like my bias term. See, what is a linear model? Linear model is W transpose X plus B. That's what it is, right? So exactly that's what we are writing here. It's a dot product weight vector multiplied by the feature vector plus the bias term. I'm just writing the bias term as W U zero, which means this is the bias term. This is the zero. This is, this is equivalent to writing W transpose X plus W zero, right? Instead of writing W zero, I'm saying W zero corresponding to the user level model. Similarly, this is a linear model of all items. This is again a dot product here, right? Very simple. So now, now the key idea here is since I can explain some of RUI, remember RUI 
is a numerical value. This will also be a numerical value. This will also be a numerical value. So what I'm trying to do literally is I'm trying to represent this RUI using a simple linear model on user features and a linear model on item features independently. Now, what are all the parameters? You have to write this as a linear regression model. This is a parameter of the model. This is a parameter of the model. This is a parameter and this is a parameter, which means I need to regularize all of them. Look at this W u, w u0, w i, w i0. All of them I have to regularize. Of course, this is a vector, this is a scalar, this is a vector, and this is a scalar. But I need to regularize them in a simple linear regression framework. So what I will simply do is, if you observe, this RUI can be explained. This is your standard matrix factorization setup, right? This is basically you're trying to you're trying to explain this RUI using the user vector and the item vector. You're also trying to explain some of this using the global averages and the user level and item level biases or averages. And you're trying to explain using linear models. Look at this. These are all linear models, right? This is the linear model corresponding to the user. This is a linear model corresponding to the item. So you're trying to explain RUI using three things. The first thing is this is this a product of two vectors. The second thing is global averages and user level averages. The third is the linear models of the side information. Again, because it's a regression problem, you'll sum it across all i and u. Of course, your parameters of the model also will increase. In addition to qi, pu, mu, bu, bi as the parameters of your model, you also have this as your parameter, you also have this, you also have this, you also have these as parameters, which means now you'll regularize all of these parameters that you have using a regularization hyperparameter lambda. So this is basically a simple problem now, right? It's basically you're having, again, you can always replace this linear model with a nonlinear model also, as long as you can differentiate it and apply techniques like SGD, you need not stick to linear models, but the simplest model here is a linear model. Again, please understand that this F and M need not, this F and G, I'm sorry, FM and GM need not be linear models, but those are the simplest models that you can incorporate, right? Very simple strategy. Again, this whole optimization problem, because this is like a regression setup, right? This is like a standard matrix factorization setup. You can solve this whole optimization problem using stochastic gradient descent or alternating least squares, which is a standard technique that we use for matrix factorization. Very simple. Again, please understand that what we just discussed is probably one of the simplest ways of incorporating side information. That's why I said this is an easy interview question. There are There is a ton of research on how to incorporate side information. There is also a very popular technique, which is called as cofactorization. Very interesting technique that we will discuss in a future video, right? Cofactorization is a slightly more mathematically complex formulation. And it works very well in a setup wherein imagine in addition to the ratings matrix where I have ratings given by each user on each item. In addition to that, imagine if I also have something called as a tags matrix. Suppose for each item or for each movie, imagine if I have tags, the tag could be about the genre of the music, uh, the genre of the movie, right? Suppose Im 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 imagine if I have some user given tags or expert given tags. So I could also have a tags matrix. Similarly, I can have a casting matrix if they're movies. So each image I will have a bunch of cast or actors and actresses who have acted in this, right? Similarly, I can also have for each user U a bunch of genres that the user says they're interested in, right? Similarly, I can also have text reviews for each item. I can have user given text ratings R and this could be the ratings text data. So imagine if you have much more complex set of information like this, you can incorporate this gracefully into the matrix factorization using a much more powerful technique called as cofactorization. Cofactorization is also a technique to incorporate side information, but mathematically it is slightly more complex. Again, we'll discuss this in one of the future videos. But the simplest approach, the way to think about it, again, the thought process here is important, right? Given a ratings matrix, you're trying to explain this using your matrix factorization model, but you can also represent it using user features and item features in a simple linear or a nonlinear regression model. That's the idea here. Of course, deriving cofactorization based model is not straightforward, right? So even if this question was asked in an interview, the interviewer, if you don't know cofactorization, if you have not worked in matrix factorization extensively, they may not expect you to derive cofactorization or arrive at cofactorization 
in an actual interview setup because this is not such an easy or obvious thing to arrive at. But arriving at this simple sort of model, simple linear models through which you are incorporating side information, this is more or less straightforward. That's why at the very beginning I said this is sort of like an easy interview question even if this was asked because you all know what is linear regression, you know how matrix factorization works, you need to combine the optimization problems of both. That is the, that is the ingenious and that's a, again it's not very innovative, it's a fairly simple straightforward thing to arrive at. Okay, so in a future video we will surely look at uh, how if you have all these matrices, how we can use a much more powerful technique called cofactorization.